these professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. Your balance of textures and flavours is nothing short of genius. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. You've actually taught me something. And I think it's very clever and it's actually very delicious. Cooking doesn't get better than this. These three chefs all share one ambition, to climb to the top of their profession and become the inspiration of a generation. But in today's show, only one of them will be good enough to make it through to Friday's quarter-final. I am here to see if these chefs, these professional chefs, can actually cut the mustard. Someone who's going to blaze a trail of greatness. Somebody who is one day going to be celebrated. Um, I was brought up at an early, early age with my grandfather who inspired me to become a chef. It's my love, it's my desire, I, I just can't wait to get in the kitchen. I became a chef because I always had a passion for food. I don't see the point of doing something if it's not going to be the best and better than everybody else's. I've always grew up around good food. I mean, my mum's always in the kitchen making cakes, making biscuits and everything else. My, dad, my dad's Italian, so I suppose I get a bit of it from him as well. I want to see chefs that can really hold their own in a kitchen. Only truly wonderful food will get these guys into a quarter-final. Welcome to Professional MasterChef. The chef beside me is Michel Roux Jr, who has held two Michelin stars since 1991. I want to see flair, I want to see above all great cooking. I want you guys to prove to us that you are great chefs. Good luck, get cooking. This is the versatility test. They have 50 minutes to show how skilled they are by producing two completely different dishes from today's ingredient, poussin. Their larder includes mushrooms, green beans, masala wine, Swiss chard, red chili, ginger, tin tomatoes, savoy cabbage, potatoes and pancetta. And to test their presentation skills, a selection of plates and dishes. They have 50 minutes to make two plates of food. Now, good food is hard enough. Truly wonderful food is extremely hard. But that is the standard that we are looking for. I want to see plates of food today that I would be proud of. Plates of food that I would be prepared to serve in my restaurant. My strong points are basic main courses. I think I show a lot of flair in my main courses. I don't like to do the same dishes over and over and over. I get bored with dishes and then I'll create new ones. It keeps me excited, it keeps me motivated. OK, Derek, very briefly, you tell us what you're cooking. OK, uh, first dish is going to be poached poussin, stuffed with wild mushrooms, sauteed green beans and a little fondant potato. OK, and the second dish? Uh, it's going to be a whole roast poussin with a tomato and basil sauce. OK, I like, I like that idea. Um, what does this food say about you? Uh, I think it just reflects what I think, uh, keep it simple, do it, uh, try and cook it right and just let the food do its talking. That's what I kind of believe. Are you enjoying your profession? I love it. It's my life. This is my life. Uh, I work 14 hour days, most days, and so it becomes your life. So if you're going to put that much hours into it, you might as well try and be the best. 22 minutes gone. You have 28 minutes left. Stumbling block for me today, I would say probably my nerves. Hopefully if I keep my nerves together, everything will be all right. OK, Joe. Yes. Do you already know what you're cooking? Uh, more or less, chef, yeah. I'm stuffing the leg with a little bit of garlic, seasoned up nicely, wrapping them both in pancetta. I'm going to serve it with some cream savoy cabbage and some nice wild mushrooms. And the other dish is going to be a Thai-style dish, so I'm going to do a nice torte pok choy with some chilli and ginger and... Um, 
you know, maybe a nice orange and lemon glacier. You are uh, you are working at a frantic pace here, Joe. I want to get it done, get it off the way. You look very, very nervous, Joe. You need to take a deep breath. I will do. I'll carry on, though. Yeah, keep going, though. Don't stop for us. Ten minutes, guys. To become a great chef, I think it takes a lot of time, a lot of commitment, a lot of desire, a lot of love. You know, you need to set your goals high. What two dishes are you preparing for us? I'm going to do a mushroom d'Excel stuffed poussin wrapped with pancetta on a potato rosti with a mushroom and masala cream sauce. I'm thinking the second dish might be just a plain chicken salad with croutons. Loads of nice flavours in there. Um, My master chef. You know, I just, I just want to be recognised. I, I love it. I've got passion. I've got a desire. It's, it's the only thing I get up in the morning for, just cooking food. Only two minutes. Come on. Fantastic. Bags of energy this morning. They are all cooking furiously. Finished. Done. Will 24-year-old Derek's long hours in the kitchen be reflected in his pancetta-wrapped ballotine stuffed with mushroom and chard? It has been poached, then roasted, and is served with potato fondant and green beans. <laughs> I think it looks great. Potato is soft and seasoned. The poussin is beautifully moist. There's a little bit of crunch in there from that chard. It's cooked really, really well. Thank you very much. Mm. That's lovely. Thank you. The poussin's still very moist. I think that's the fact of the, the, the bacon around the outside yeah. and the fact that the... Um, the stuffing has kept that moisture in. Mm -hmm. It's very straightforward, yeah. very clever, very precise. Good dish. Will Derek's second dish of whole roast poussin on a bed of tomato and basil ragu reach the same high standards? Why the whole bird presented on the plate like this? It's awkward and you have to think of your customer. Yeah. The poussin itself is lovely, perfectly cooked and moist. I'd love to eat this dish, but I don't see a dish like that in fine dining. Yeah, okay. Firm, moist flesh. I think you've had a pretty decent round. Thank you. I think I've Thank got you. the skills, the knowledge, and the experience to win it. I want to be the best. I want to go as far as I can go. Will nervous Joe's first dish of Thai-style poussin with Swiss chard and orange and ginger glaze achieve the expected standards? It's lovely, colourful, uh, presented well, the two little supremes of poussin you know, in a heart shape, which is lovely. Could work. Good. The first flavour that hits it's me, it's orange. Sure. Masses of orange. It's, um, it overpowers the whole dish. It's killing the delicate flavour sure. of the poussin. Sure. That, that is not a balanced dish. Okay. Yeah? Yes, sir. Your chicken's a little too chewy. I don't mind the crunch of your veg, but it's all orange juice. Um, yeah, that's not right. That's not right. Can Joe redeem himself with his second poussin dish, pancetta wrapped supreme served with creamed cabbage? Oh dear. Ooh. Ooh, what happened there? Mm. 
overdone, obviously, you've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, pancetta is dark. I had great reservations of creamed cabbage. Yeah. But it works. The creamed cabbage tastes lovely. Thank you, sir. It's a shame of your little mistakes, you know, because that's a good dish. I'll always try and keep my standards up to scratch, but, you know, if nerves get in the way of things, they can, they can damage your uh, performance. 26-year-old Cardiff chef Robert's first dish is chicken, chilli and crouton salad. Will it show enough skill? A little bit messy, a little bit scruffy, a little bit too much going on there okay. for me. It is well seasoned, the chicken is still moist. I do pick up some olive oil, I do pick up a little bit of cheese. Your croutons are crispy, you. your flavours are fine. Lovely textures, the crouton brings in that lovely crunch, which is good. On the whole, I, I, I think that, that works well. It's very well seasoned as well, so that, I, I'm quite happy with that. Can he continue to impress with his second Poussin dish? Pancetta wrapped breast with a masala and mushroom sauce on a potato rosti with carrots and beans. It looks like a well-balanced dish. Um, so, no, it's good. Looks good. Thank you. Mm. That was really delicious. Thank you. I must say. Your rusty potato was lovely and moist, beautifully cooked. Such a shame it had gone soggy from the sauce. I'm impressed, that's, that's good cooking. That is good cooking. Moist chicken, nice skin around it with that ham. Really lovely creamy sauce. It tastes good. Thank you very much. Textures are great. In both cases now. Thank you. Good lad. Small things that let me down, I was a bit, a bit annoyed about that. So you learn from your mistakes and become a better person for it. So, yeah, I'm happy. However well or badly you feel you may have done, we are only at halfway. Gentlemen, thank you very much. This is a great standard in here, and I'm finding it hard to get the smile off my face. Derek is very impressive. To make the ballotina chicken like that with the mushroom and the Swiss chard in it, from a dining point of view, that's as good a dish as I've eaten in this round throughout the competition. Two cooking methods, poaching and roasting in one dish. Spot on. In the next round, I really need to uh, demonstrate more fine dining qualities. Presentation wise, I need to up my, my game a little bit. Robert can cook as well, that, that I am sure. That salad, I thought it had colour, it looked vibrant, and above all, it packed so much flavour, but skillful balance of flavour as well. His salad looks a little bit scruffy for me. I put it in my mouth and thought, no, no, I like this. I like the textures, I like the flavours. He's got great taste. I had some good comments. So yeah, I'm quite happy, quite confident, quite pleased with how it went, yeah. Joe's got a lot of work to do because his Thai dish was a disaster. Orange juice? I mean, what was going through the boy's mind? He made some catastrophic mistakes. I mean, let's not beat him out in the bush, burning one of the Supremes. That's just not on. That, that should never happen. They were pretty easy mistakes to make, uh, but I should, obviously, they, they should have been sorted out and they shouldn't have been served like that. A chef must understand classics. He must understand what the classics do for gastronomy. They are the building blocks. They are the foundations of real, true fine dining. On your benches, you have the ingredients as well as the recipes for two classic dishes. Fish canals and sable biscuit with mango. At the end of this, Two of you will be going home, one of you will be a quarter finalist. One hour, 20 minutes. 
get cooking. It's vitally important that these guys can master the techniques and the skill it takes to present classic dishes because there isn't a great chef alive who can't. Their first classic is the traditional Lyonnaise dish, fish canals. Delicately poached fish and cream mousse that must be precisely shaped using two spoons and served with a beurre blanc. A wonderful canal has to be light and fluffy, almost like a pillow. I don't want to see round canals, square canals. I want to see proper shaped canals with the spoons together. The beurre blanc has to have the right balance. Just a little bit of white wine in there, not too rich in butter. Just enough cream to hold it all together and emulsify. Their classic dessert is sable au monde, a shortbread biscuit with mango, which takes its name from the French word for sand. The secret of a great shortbread biscuit is not overworking it. If you overwork it, you end up with a lump of cardboard, and it is horrible. What, in your view, does it take to become a Michelin-starred chef? Um, I feel that it takes a lot of dedication, ambition, uh, motivation and commitment. If you're not committed to the job, then I don't think you'll ever become a Michelin-starred chef. Are there any of those attributes you've listed that you don't have? No. Derek has come in and approached this round like he approached the first round. Full of professionalism. He's an impressive young fella. You are halfway. You've had 40 minutes. Robert. Yes, sir. Um, what are those red specks there in your uh, biscuit mix? Um, I've incorporated some chilli into this. Uh, I've also given it a little bit of the um, passion fruit. So you're going to have two lots of kick. You're going to have a little bit of passion fruit and a little bit of chilli in here. You are determined to put your stamp on this one then, sir, aren't you? I'm trying, yes. <laughs> yeah, so. Robert the Radical, he really has thought outside of the box. He's thought sablé biscuit, shortbread biscuit. What can I put inside the biscuit to make mine different? You've got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes left. How are we doing, Joe? You lost the nerves or yeah. still...? Yeah, lost the nerves now. Just going to give him the best shot. So we're going to see the ordinary Joe? Uh, yeah, hopefully it should be a much better Joe. Hopefully. And you do look a lot happier. It's, it's much nicer. Are yeah. you making me nervous in the first round? <laughs> How do you feel about the two dishes? First of all, the uh, the fish mousse. I've done fish mousse before. You know, hopefully it'll be taste nice. It'll be nicely poached, not overcooked. And uh, pastry. Hopefully we should be all right. You have five minutes. Only five minutes. Whatever you got, put it on the plate because that's the end of that. With a quarter final place at stake, will the chef's classic dishes reach the high standard required? First under scrutiny is their fish canals and beurre blanc. Joe. After a difficult first round, Joe desperately needs to prove he can compete at this level. Your canals aren't that great a shape. Uh, they're like little dumplings rather than canals. I like the texture of your sauce, but it is so acidic and there's hardly any fish coming through.
I described the canals earlier as a pillow. I wouldn't want to put my head on that pillow. Yeah? Yeah. Beurre Blanc is a butter sauce. Yeah. This for me is a cream sauce. Robert. As a diner, I like the look of your plate of food. It's light, creamy, slightly acidic. Personally, I think that's a complete triumph. That fish mousse is good. Thank you. In fact, no, that fish mousse is very good. Thank you, Chef. That is a lovely texture. It is smooth, very smooth, and very light. But now you also have made a cream sauce, okay. yeah? Yes, As opposed to a beurre blanc, which should be a butter sauce, much lighter. Yes, Derek. So, Derek, I think it's the wrong choice of plate. All three of you have gone for square plates, but I think it's the wrong choice. I think a bowl would have been better. A very, very light and delicious mousse. That is exactly how a Bel Blanc should be. Uh, well done. I think that is most definitely fish canals and a bell blind in my book. I think your bell blanc's lovely. Just the right amount of acidity and bursting with flavour. The Sable au Mong is the last chance for the chefs to prove they can cut it in a world-class kitchen. All right, Derek, let's have a look. Can Derek maintain his high standards with his classic dessert? It is a very pretty plate. It's very, uh, very precise and lovely colours. Mm. Lovely flavours. There's a lovely marriage of flavours there. The one real downer is the sable. Yeah. It is the biscuit. It is underdone, which makes it chewy. Your biscuits are slightly chewy, okay. but I don't care. Because your balance, your balance of textures and flavours is, is nothing short of, of genius. Joe. Can Joe impress with his take on this classic dish? It's not neat, not precise, which is what we're looking for in fine dining, what we're looking for at the very highest level. Mm. That's gone. You saw that big mouthful that I took in. It's just, it's dissolved. Sign of a good shortbread biscuit is that as soon as you start crunching into it, it just goes into that lovely sandy texture which this biscuit has. Well done. Very sweet. Vanilla, passion fruit sharpness, mango soft sweetness, fantastic biscuit. Robert. Will the judges like Robert's addition of chili and passion fruit to his sable biscuits? Those shortbread biscuits are overcooked, but they definitely have the right texture. I'm also getting a little bit of heat, and I'm also getting a little, quite a bit actually, of acidity in there from the passion fruit that you've put into the sable. You've actually taught me something. Thank you. Yeah, that's brought a smile to your face because I think that works, and I think it's very clever, and it's actually very delicious. The mango's not too sweet. 
It helps to wash out the palate. We are one small step from a terrific dish. The standard in here today was extremely high. And I think, personally, it's a shame that only one of you is going to go through. All right, off you go. It has been great today, but not everybody has been great. Let us start with Robert. The Poussin wrapped in ham with an absolutely gorgeous masala and mushroom sauce. The cream mushroom sauce was heavenly, was, was beautiful. That canal of fish I thought was stunning. Absolutely stunning. But it was just let down by the sauce, which was so heavy and just not right. Terrible, terrible mistake. Joe really didn't start very well. His pancetta wrapped supreme of poutine, burning one of the supremes. That's just not on. That, that should never happen. His Thai inventive salad was awful. Joe is nowhere near the level of really two superstar young chefs in Robert and Derek. Derek was hugely impressive from the time when we went go and gave us a wonderful ballotine of chicken with the mushroom inside it. That was a great looking dish and a really good sauce. His canals of fish, the mousse was light and the beurre blanc was definitely a beurre blanc. Derek's dessert was simply stunning. It was better than some of the desserts I've been offered at fine dining establishments. But it was about the biscuit. It was about the subly. And that didn't quite work. They most definitely were not a shortbread biscuit, let alone a sablé biscuit. We are looking for someone not just good, not just competent, but special. Someone who really does have a great future in front of them. We have seen some great cooking today. In fact, I think I would go as far as saying that we have seen some magnificent dishes today. Chef, going through to the next round. It's Derek. Uh, honestly, I thought, uh, thought I thought I just messed out. There's room for improvement. You know, every day I'm learning and get better and better. Tough competition. Disappointed with my mistakes. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm shaking. I, I just, honestly, I'm not, not what the hell I, I just didn't expect it. Derek will be back for Friday's quarter final. Tomorrow night, three more chefs battle it out for the title of professional master chef. Oh dear. Quite simply, not acceptable. It's more than food. Later, nine couples whose dream it is to go into partnership with Raymond Blanc, a new series of The Restaurant at 8. Becoming next on BBC Two, highlights of the Brits in action at the Paralympics. <laughs>